Uh, Coach, can you uh, talk us through the decision? I think I know why, but can you talk through the decision why you just uh, agreed for this game to end in the tie? And then also, um, seems like three pointers were a very conscious effort and you shot a lot of them. Looks pretty good. Yeah, no. Um, uh, first, you know, I, which I want to kind of speak to, I think it ties to the question around the overtime decision or the or the or you know the choice not to play overtime um, you know we feel really really um, bad for Angel McCautry and, and uh, we're, you know we're not sure of the injury and, and we obviously hope it's not serious uh, uh, but that definitely I think you know factored into both teams minds in terms of whether it's worth the risk to play in overtime you know in this situation um, after one team had already lost a player to injury and um, you know these games are an opportunity to prepare yourself for the season but um, not see your season go up in smoke you know trying to prove a point um, you know in, in, in early May so um, yeah so that that's what went into the decision there uh, in terms of the threes you know I think it's it's for sure going to be a big part of how we want to play uh, you know, I think there are times where we, you know, we're, we're settling for them. We're still learning how to play basketball with each other. Uh, there are times that players are popping when they should be diving. Um, you know, even on catches, players are shooting three. Sometimes maybe a teammate is open on a cut or we can make a, a, an extra pass to get a better three or, or more opportunity to attack the basket and get to the rim. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to give our players the freedom to shoot the basketball when they're open, but they're going to have to earn that right. Um, everybody can't just launch it, you know, when they're open. We're, we're going to have to see things in practice and and the the, uh, the stats and the shots that we will continue to track in practice um, to be able to have, you know, the credit that you need to be able to shoot the ball at any time. Uh, but clearly, you know, whether it's Jasmine Walker or, you know, Nia Coffey showing an ability to make shots, uh, you know, see it knock down one. You know, Bria's getting more comfortable behind the line. And then obviously as we get Neca and Tolliver and, and uh, Amanda, and you know, we're encouraging Sinead to shoot a couple as well. It, it, it'll be a big part of how we want to play. Brady Clough for us the nation. Hey Derek, uh, wondering if you could just give us an update on Taya. Um, is that just a cramp or, or is there a, an injury she suffered there? Yeah, no, I, I don't think it'll be a long-term thing. I think, you know, she had gotten uh, hip-checked on a few screens throughout the course of the game, and just, you know, the sheer size of Cambage and, and Wilson, I think she got kneed in, in, in the side of the leg a couple of times, and then that, that second or third time, I think it just it created a kind of a Charlie Horse or, or a real strong reaction in, in the, uh, you know, the, the fibers and the muscles and super tight and, and kind of lumped up a little, but... Um, I think she'll be fine, and you know, thankfully we don't have a game for another six days, and um, I, I think she'll be good, and it won't be hopefully um, anything that keeps her out long. Abby, H and B Media. What's up, Coach? Um, What's up, Abby? Can you speak to just the balance on this roster? I feel like it's not too front court heavy, too uh, back court heavy. You have a lot of players who are uh, interchangeable yeah. that can play on multiple positions. Can you just speak to that, and also can you speak to how? that it helped you all as the uh, season continues? Yeah, I mean, that was, you know, <clears throat> as soon as we, uh, you know, turned and, uh, you know, pivot in, in free agency in terms of the direction of our team and the type of personnel that, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to add, uh, you know, that was a big focus for us. You know, over the last couple of seasons, um, you know, we felt like we lacked in that area. We either, you know, we had bigs and guards, but we, we didn't always have the versatility um, with those guards, bigs, forwards, to be able to match up and play, you know, no matter who the opponent, uh, you know, is on a given night. And so, you know, we, we have some tough decisions to make, but we, we, we feel like uh, at least that the plan we put in place in terms of inviting these type of players to training camp and, and giving them a chance to show us and, and, and also I think for, um, you know, our team to, to start to connect to what it feels like to play basketball with a balanced roster at, it, at every position, uh, that that would be a fun thing to experience. So that's what we've seen so far. Um, you know, we'll get a chance to take a, take a step back for Mother's Day tomorrow, and then, you know, we'll be back at it Monday, Tuesday, and, and then, we'll, you know, we'll have to make some tough decisions on Wednesday. 
Uh, but, but every player here has, you know, done everything that, you know, she could possibly do and, and will continue to do over the next couple of days. Like, it's going to be tough no matter what. And we're going to have to say no thank you to somebody that deserves to be in the WNBA and it just may not be with us at this time. Miriam Swanson, that would be a Hey Derek, wanted to, um, Jasmine obviously made her presence felt, felt on her for, for the game today. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Jasmine for sure um, is is a real player. Um, you know, we, you know, tried not to really talk too much about, um, you know, at least for me personally, how strongly I felt about her abilities to be successful at this level, um, watching her play in college and, um, you know, she was, you know, honestly the the sole reason why, you know, moving up to number seven was was the play um, to just have a chance. If we if we could get to her, uh, that's what we wanted to do. And you know, she's done a good job so far. Uh, she shot the basketball incredibly well today. Uh, that that's something that she can do when she wakes up in the morning and she goes to sleep at night. Uh, I think the fun part for her and for us is that. She's a true worker, and she wants to improve and get better every day. Uh, there's a humility about her spirit and her work ethic uh, that she wants to learn. She wants to ask questions, and as her game expands offensively, um, which it already is pretty pretty good, she can't just shoot threes. She can do more, but as, as her game expands and then she starts to understand uh, WNBA personnel on the defensive end, where she can start to show her size and athleticism um, on that side of the floor, you know, she's going to be a special player. Um, you know, nine rebounds today in 24 minutes. Um, that, that's also an indicator of, you know, she's going to help us defensively just with cleaning up the boards, uh, but also her, her versatility and, and the different people she'll be able to guard. Go to Megan Hines. Hey, Derek, I was going to ask, um, about you as a friend, as well as a team. Um, you had a great showing on a different line as well. This time, I've got for the performance as well. Right. You, you said Nia or Bria? Yeah, Nia. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think that, um, you know, Nia shot the ball really well from three um, in Vegas last weekend. She has shot it, you know, well in training camp and practices and scrimmages. And um, I thought she knocked down a couple good ones today. Um, but, you know, what's really great about her is that, you know, she can do so much more. Um, and, and as she continues to, to build her confidence shooting the ball behind the line, it actually opens up the ability to do what she can really do well, which is slashing to the rim. Uh, a couple of the offensive rebounds that she got early in this game, and, and I think even in the second half, um, she has real strong explosive ability off the floor. Um, you know, that we like. And uh, she, she did a lot of good things today. Uh, she had a couple finishes at the basket that she wants back right now. Uh, and and uh, But she's done a, a lot of really good things. And, you know, we're, we're really happy that she got this opportunity and that we were fortunate enough to add her to our training camp roster. And, you know, again, she's done a lot of good things and, uh, you know, deserves a place in this league. And, you know, we'll, we'll see if it's with us over the next few days. Hey, Hi. Uh, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about Jasmine's game. And in addition to the fact that she obviously scored a bunch of points, made a lot of threes, she just didn't really look like a rookie out there. What have you seen from her both in this game and in training camp? I mean, we've seen just that. And not just, um, you know, obviously, you know, her skill work and capability, but the work that she puts in for that to show in the game. Um, she absorbs everything. I will say this. She's probably the first rookie that I've come across in, like, the last, like, two or three years that knows who she's playing with. Like she watched video of KT, of Simone. She knows who she's playing with. She knows the vets <clears throat> and she's just a sponge. And it's it's really refreshing to be able to have a young player that has the maturity um, and the respect for the game um, in a way that really shows in her individual, uh, just what she brings individually. Miriam. And again, what did you think of the uh, convention center environment? How was it out there without fans? Or weird, I don't know. Was it, was it cool? Was it going to like? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's always nice being in Los Angeles. So 
being here is great. Um, I think that they built out this convention center uh, in a way that feels like it can be our home. Um, still a little bubbly feeling, but um, it's it's good. It's good. I think that this dress rehearsal was was imperative for us. Um, and I'm hoping that after June 3rd, I believe, we'll be able to build out some stands to have some fans, but um, it definitely feels more like a home atmosphere. Ron Wallace. Uh, how are you doing, Jay Necker? Good. So what did you guys think when, when uh, Naya hit that shot and tied the ball game? And I know you guys didn't play in overtime. That was a good reason for not playing overtime because of the injury to a player. But players hit the shot like that. Should we expect more of that uh, this upcoming season? Yeah, when Nia hit that shot, um, you know, that's – that's a part of the game you know we're trying to win even though this is um, a preseason game and and I respect Vegas in that too they were trying to win as well I think it really put us in situations that we're going to expect to see in the season um, but I think it also speaks to the uh, composition of the team that we have you know we we have a lot of people that can make big plays and and for us to be able to experience that early on you know before the season starts was huge time for two more go to John W. Davis How comfortable did you feel out there with your shots today? It seemed like you were able to shoot from various positions on the floor. Yeah, yeah, I've been working a, a lot on expanding kind of like my range and how I get my shots. Um, today was like the first day that I really played live with the team, so it was really fun to be out there. Um, and <clears throat> I'm happy that I'm able to kind of start to develop the chemistry with my teammates. Um, I'm always my biggest critic. So I definitely think that I could do better, both on the defensive end and the offensive end. Um, but it feels good to kind of, you know, feel what I've been working on, work through the game, especially as we develop team chemistry to really be a well-oiled machine. Last question, we'll go to... Uh, hey, Mega. Um, obviously it's early, but um, from this year to last year, can you just speak to uh, Taya's progression as a uh, board general? Yeah, I mean, I think you use the exact right um, term. You know, we're, we're wanting her to be a floor general, you know, and and she's learning a lot along the way. Um, I think right now it's all about, I mean, she's, she's quick, you know, and it's all about the balance of understanding, not just the quick quickness on the court, but quick decision making and, you know, creating shots for teammates. And I see each day her getting better. And there's no one better to learn from than um, E. Will, KT, and of course, Fish. I mean, we all we all were witnesses to um, him getting five rings, being a floor general in a lot of ways, and so I think she has a lot of great support, and I look forward to seeing how she matures as a point guard. Thanks, Neka. Jen Walker will be next, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Jen Walker, who had 23 points, nine rebounds, and seven three-pointers mm -hmm. made today. Uh, we'll start with two and you win with the LA Times. Hi Jasmine. So we knew you could shoot the three from watching you in college, but what do you hope that you've been able to show the sparks in this organization, what you can do otherwise to compete in this league outside of just putting up stats and putting up numbers? Uh, you know, just show them that I can do like, you know, whatever is asked for me. Um, I'm very versatile in my game, so whether you need me to put a, you know, put a guard in the post, you know, I'll work my way down there. Or if you need me to bring a big out to the three, I'll work my way out there too. So I just really like play to my strengths. Ready, Clopper. Jasmine, how much does a game like that affect your confidence going into the start of the season of your rookie year? Does, is that really help? Oh yes, uh, I have fun, uh, you know, to see uh, you know, most of my shots, most of my threes go in, my like, confidence through the roof. And, you know, being that it's a WNBA game, so, you know, that always feels special to me because, you know, this has always been my dream. And, you know, to be able to accomplish my dream and actually, you know, put up numbers like that, like, confidence is through the roof. Miriam? Hey, Jasmine, congrats. Uh, congrats on the WNBA game. Um, Naka was saying that you're, you're the first rookie in a few years to come in and like known everybody on the team, known all the best. Um, why is that important to 
you and um, do, do you sort of realize how appreciative those vets are that, that you know who they are? Uh, yeah, uh, once I know that I was going to the Spark, do your homework. They're your teammates. They're going to be your teammates. These are going to be your sisters this uh, season. So why not, you know, come on the team and already know what they do or already know who they is as a person and stuff. So I want to, you know, I did some homework. You know, I'm looking at each player. I'm looking at clips of them in college, you know. It's just like the simple things. Like it makes them know that you engage and, you know, you want to learn and you know who they actually are and who you'll be playing with. So that's all there was. Time for two more. We'll go to Ron Wallace. Jasmine, welcome to the WNBA. Ron Wallace with Balling Down South here in Alabama. We got some proud fans down here. Well, well, good game uh, you played today. Uh, you guys got the Dallas Wings coming in uh, this upcoming Friday. How do you guys expect, you know, to, to guard the likes of Daniel Evans, Chelsea Dungy, uh, Charlie Collier and stuff like that? How are you going to prepare yourself and help your teammates prepare for that game? I'll oh, just keep listening to the defensive call that's called, um, you know, that's being called, uh, and do what I'm supposed to do on defense uh, that we work on in practice. And the game should go through it itself, you know. As long as you do what you're supposed to do, you always come up on top. Last question, we'll go to John Davis. Hi, Jasmine. What do you feel like you and Coach T are working on when it comes to defense? What do you feel like you're learning from Coach T? Uh, for me, I know coming out of college, uh, you know, being that I'm so long, I didn't have to really press up two guards while guarding them on the perimeter. But, you know, she's being real patient with me, you know, telling me, you know, when you're guarding someone, you have to get up on them. Uh, always getting in the gaps, always being in that 2-9 position, being able to help the helper and stuff. So, I mean, it's really nothing new, of course, but, you know, she just really, like, cleaning up some things that, you know, I need to get better at. Hi, D, I ask this question as respectfully as possible. Uh, with the training camp contract, do you feel like you've done enough to make this final roster of 12? Um, well, that's not up to me. Um, what I try to focus on is bringing what I can every single day, whether, I mean, on the court and off the court. So as long as I can show that I'm being me and that I can bring value to this team, you know, that's all I can do. So that's what I'm focusing on. Christina Williams, Girl Stock Sports. Hey Mia, can you just walk us through that final play for those of us who could not watch it on a stream or anything? Can you just walk us through that final play, the game time shot? Um, well, we we had a small lineup in uh, to try to take advantage of some of their bigs, and we tried to get Cam Beige and the, uh, the pick just to allow our guards, you know, try to attack that situation and everything. Um, ended up being into a pop situation. I had a three, but I felt more comfortable hitting a two, so just went for it, did, went for a pull up, and yeah. Back to Hines. Hi, Mia. I just wanted to ask how important is it for you to have the all the intangibles um, in your game? Um, you had a lot of great shots, but you also were aggressive on the board as well. Um, I mean, I just try to focus on literally anything that I can do, anything um, I can do to bring value to this team, whether that's defense, offense, getting deflection rebounds, whether it's stuff that shows up on the stat sheet. If it's not on the stat sheet, like who, who cares? I'm just trying to um, just do what I can for this team and I'm here to serve, I'm here to learn and get better. So I'm just trying to do all that I can. Two more for today. We'll go to Tiffany New in LA Times. <clears throat> Hi, Mia. Speaking to that kind of just do whatever you can to show that you can you can earn a spot here. How important is that kind of mindset, considering how tough it is to make a roster in the WNBA? Yeah, I mean it's it's an incredible group of women, um, very elite. So try trying to find okay, what are you good at? How what? What things can you, you know, help with the team? How, what value can you bring to a team? And taking advantage of the opportunities that you can. Um, but also, it's more than just being a player. It's more than just being 
you know, a basketball player, you're also a person at the end of the day. Like, are you a good teammate? How are you off the court? Like, just all of those things, it all goes into it. So just being aware and cognizant of how you are handling yourself as a person, how you're showing up as a teammate, um, and just, I don't know, just taking advantage of your opportunities. Last question, here in Swanson, LA Daily News. Katie, hey, I'm just wondering what you thought of um, playing here at the convention center in the court, the environment, how that felt? Um, it was definitely, you know, a different, different scenery, but you know, we get used to the court, the lights, all that stuff. It takes a second, but you know, once we start playing, it's about the game, so.